podcast. <laughs> Fuck off. Alright. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> hello and welcome. To- I swear to fucking God, I hate you. Like- hello and welcome to the Nothing to Play podcast, a mediocre podcast about video games, movies, and Sacagawea coins. Uh, we have the special Indicate episode this week, and we have more more guests than ever. We have too many guests, and we got returning guests like Bean Dip and Matt, and then we have new guests um, known as in the Valley as the Scottsdale Strangler. We have PJ Vilsaint, <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have uh, my life life partner and home decorating friend. Uh, Win Win Timsky. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I did not read the directions well while playing, and I royally fucked us by the end of the game. Justin both develops games mediocrely and reads mediocrely. Yeah, it's a gift and a curse. And the most surprising thing to come out of Indicate was Brandon not getting sued for his Final <laughs> Fantasy game. Yeah, give it time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I showed I showed plenty of people. I'm sure I'll be screwed. What was the ratio? Because whenever I was standing by you, it was like, I think everyone that I saw play your game was like, ah, I hope you're looking forward to your lawsuit. No, it wasn't that bad. Like I had, I did have some people that were like, so does Square Enix know about this? And I was like, no. Not well, was yet. it? Of like, course they know. You made Final Fantasy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As as Matt and PJ were making sure to try to tell everybody. Like, yeah, right. Shigeru Miyamoto is gonna come after you. <laughs> yeah, you know, because because of all of his. Claim on Final Fantasy. Yeah, he, yeah, he made all the games on the NES. Yeah. Every game on the NES. That's <laughs> right. Oh, I saw a picture earlier today where it was like the NES and it was like innovated, whatever. It's like Super Nintendo. It's like just better version of NES. And it was like N64 revolutionized 3D games. It was like GameCube, just better in 64. And then it's like Wii and then it's like Wii U, just kind of the better graphic. Wii and then it's like Switch and then it's like whatever the next console is, just gonna be a better graphic. Switch. Yeah, yeah. You, always, you always buy Nintendo stock. Uh, alternating consoles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is next console, not so sell. Much. <laughs> sell. Sell, sell, sell. <laughs> it's a seller's market. Yeah. Yeah. Just ride that switch as long as possible. Yeah. <laughs> or ride so she it. said. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Alright, uh, what, what's some of the, like, like, what was, like, your favorite game? Night game, any game that you played? That wasn't your game. <laughs> Not the game that won the award for that game. <laughs> <laughs> Elephant in the room. Yeah, there was a uh, like a weird schoolhouse porn game. It was supposed to be not safe for work, but it was very safe for work when we went and saw yeah, it. Yeah, when when a few of us <laughs> yeah. walked in, three of us walked in, and it was just like a like a dating sim kind of looking thing. It looked pretty. Pretty, uh, when I walked in by myself earlier, it was like a weird music video, but like yeah. there was nothing, there was yeah. nothing like offensive about it. There were a few of those music videos like, in like various your, parts of the game. It looked but, like your classic itch.io game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But, but trust me, it got really weird. Yeah, like very pornographic. And, yeah. yeah. PJ and Brandon said that they saw some beef curtains open up and there's yes. like a dick temple inside more or less yes. <laughs> more or less <laughs> definitely <laughs> more it's, it's like, and the main <laughs> character was just asking to try to get dicks with yeah the other main guy yeah 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 and there were people in the in the crowd that was very excited about that's guaranteed it. Yeah. to be a fan favorite at an event such as indie k <laughs> yeah so it's all indie developers are just super horny is that going down as your favorite game then, PJ? Absolutely. Yeah. I was. I think everybody knew it's by going down for somebody. <laughs> going down is one of the mechanics. Going yeah. down is one of the mechanics. Yes. Yeah. It's it a special cool. controller. All right. So, wait, so wait, what was your favorite game? Uh, I have to say, so with Night Games is that merchant game. That game was a lot of fun, but it was simple. It was simple, but like Wizard the games that, Here's the thing: like Night Game games are so fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> that you're like, hey, this is actually fun over the weird. <laughs> for, for for the listeners, uh, the Merchant game, and I can't remember the exact name. Wizard, Mer- Wizard, Wizard Merchant. Wizard Merchant, yeah. Was, you actually have uh, infrared scanners like in a supermarket checkout, like at the self-checkout. So it takes place during medieval times. It takes times. place during medieval <laughs> times. You work in some sort of a merchant shop, and you sell all these different wares, like weapons and armor, and what, fruits and vegetables, and gems. And potions. And potions. 
and uh, customers come up and basically you just like like have a stack of things that they're asking for and you're just trying to feverishly scan the barcodes for these items as quickly as possible to get as much points as you can within the allotted time and it was actually amazingly fun. I it thought it was ridiculous. I thought it was very clever the way that you actually have to like dig through like a jewelry case to find the barcodes for different types of magical <laughs> rings and necklaces that come up. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, if you follow me on Facebook, I recorded a video of them playing, <laughs> and so good. in the video, I got a very nice recording of PJ yelling at everybody, and then I zoomed in really close on Branson's face as he was panicking <laughs> of the pressure panicking. Of, I was focused. of being like a wizard stock boy bitch. I I take my wizarding very seriously. Those weren't scanners, they were magic wands. Yeah, magic yes. wands, yeah. Well, it's like Matt said, anything from the future in the past is magic. Yeah, that's right. So, I, I think my favorite game might be the um, the RPG, you remember the name, right? Oh, yeah, uh, the, RPG Time. RPG Time, Fantastic. and it had, it had like a subtitle. Um, so, this guy came from Japan, he doesn't speak English, there was a volunteer um, from the college that was there helping translate for him for people that had questions and stuff on one of the days. Um, and he said that this game took him seven years. He's been working on it for seven years. I don't even think it's wow. completely done yet. It's um, launching next year. Launching next year. And uh, what, on iOS and uh, stuff like that? iOS and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. And this game, he literally basically hand-drew everything. It looked like, you know, something... I, I, I was hearing a little bit of the backstory on it. He and the other guy that came up with it, they came up with it in school. I don't know exactly what grade of school... And I think it won some award in Japan, and then they kind of went their separate ways after graduating and learned game development at different places and started working for other companies. He worked for Sony Interactive Entertainment for a while, and then these two guys got back together and they're like, hey, remember this game we worked on? Let's actually make it into a game, and like, it's just amazing the amount of like work he's put into it. He basically, like, it's like hand-drawn and animated um, it looks like a storybook, and I can't even, oh, like... somebody's like, notebook come to life. Why, exactly. It's just, there's so much, it's like oozing charm. Yeah, like, the, so cool. there's, like, children's imagination, yeah. like, elements and stuff in it. So cool. made it really special. Yeah, yeah, that game was really beautiful. I was just, like, I couldn't stop smiling the whole time I was playing it. I was just blown away. It was so much fun. Yeah. What was yours, Tim? Well, first, I just want to say, uh, today I was wearing my Vib Ribbon shirt, and uh, I've worn my bib ribbon shirt at GDC, and like nobody knows what it is, but here, like dozens of people were like, "Whoa, it's bib ribbon!" Uh, it's, it's because just, you made the game. Whoa! <laughs> just like you no, know. Matt, just because you're wearing a shirt, that doesn't always mean you wore you you, you wore the game. You made the game. <laughs> I mean, the game. I mean, in two out of three, <laughs> in two out of five. Well, Matt is Captain America. But uh, yeah, that, I made Captain America. No, you that are just, Captain that America. just that just leads me to believe that uh, more uh, indie developers know what Vib Ribbon is, the most important PlayStation One game ever made. Uh, to play, believe the best, the most important video game made of all time. Um, more indie developers know what that is than like people at GDC. Therefore, indie developers are more woke. <laughs> Hashtag woke. Yeah. Uh, games. Yeah. What was your favorite one that you played in the end? Um. Hmm. Come back to me. <laughs> God damn it, Tim. <laughs> you you did that whole intro. Over, but... <laughs> I'm, gonna take, I'm gonna take one of Tim's spots and a game that should get a shout out that we played the very first day. Rival restaurants. Yes, yeah, they're great. I wasn't there when I was there. Is it rival restaurants or restaurant rivals? Rival restaurants. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just like the end. <laughs> yeah, it's I a car, it's a card game. Yes, it's a series. tabletop card game. Where do you want to describe it? Yeah, it's a tabletop card game where everybody represents a different type of kitchen, and then there's a giant market in the middle, and you're trying to all buy ingredients, uh, and then you have to like barter for those ingredients and yeah. yell and shout. <laughs> you have one on minute. You, want. you have one minute to just like barter and shout and like give me the ingredients I need. Well, and you can you can collaborate with other people and help them out, or you can try to screw them over. So you can say like, That's hey, my favorite hey, part. does anybody need need these ingredients? I'll buy them for you. And sometimes, and you can decide if you want to give them a discount and say, hey, you know what? I'll just give this to you. Like I'll trade it to you, or I'll mark it up and and like make some more money because you need it real bad. Like you can decide how you want to do it. And the idea is that you're using these ingredients to cook these different dishes that you have there's a simple dish and a complex dish or unique dish as they say and they're all worth point values and as you get more cook more dishes your point values go up but the twist is each time you do a dish you get a bunch of trash 
And so and the trash against are, you. They're negative points. So you can't just be churning out dishes. You have to kind of like get rid of your trash. Right. Go to like the other place and save up money. And so that kind of makes the game really interesting because you're like, I'll buy your trash from you. I'm like, oh my goodness, thank you. So I can actually make more dishes. And so it, it was a very fascinating way to play a game. We, we, we really enjoyed it. I was surprised how close it came. It oh, was yes. Like literally down to like everyone screwing each we were other all over on like the last round. Yeah, yeah, and it came down yeah. to like anybody potentially could have won, but everyone ganged up on each other and like dicked each other over at the very end. Yeah, because yeah, you get like superpowers as you keep going. Like you get like extra abilities, extra money and points and all kinds of craziness. So yeah, it was, it was great. That was a polished game. The artwork in that game was impressive. That It really caught my eye right off the bat. It was, it was just oh, I great. hope it's polished. Well, the it's done. The yeah, it's done. Yeah, yeah. In fact, they're working on like the, the <coughs> expansion or something right now. Yeah. 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 It also had so many puns like Tim would buy that game. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I based my purchases on. It's true. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Matt, yeah, what was your... Uh, I don't know. Decorum was really good. That was what it was called, right? The one where you're decorating. The room decorating. The room decorating. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, decor, yeah. <laughs> the one that uh, I royally fucked over for me and Tim. Yeah, me and Matt did one of the best. <laughs> I, yeah, I really... Uh, the design of the game was super good. It, it really conveys the feeling of how frustrating it is to be able to try and communicate things. <laughs> well, no, not... It's like... It shows how frustrating it is to, like like expect the other person to know what you want and to be working under those guidelines and then at some point they have what's called the heart to heart where you can like explain one of your rules to the other pl- actually we haven't described it give some game. context okay so the point of the game is you're decorating a house you're remodeling a house and so you have four different tiles of different rooms of the house and there's all these different pieces like hanging pieces and lamps and stuff like that and the whole goal of the game is that each character each player has a card with requirements that the house must meet. And they're crazy stuff. Like the each room can't have every room can't have the same kind of style of something or certain rooms need to be painted and there's all kinds of nonsense. And so both people have different types of requirements. <clears throat> and the goal is that in 20 rounds, both people's requirements have to be met. Yet, they can't talk about those requirements. The only feedback you get once you move something is that, was that okay with you? And the other person can only say, that was good, that was okay, or no. <laughs> right? And just based off that, you had to, each round, just try to figure out how to try to meet my requirements, but then not screw over the other person so they can hit their requirements. It was really fascinating. Yeah, it seems like a really good game to play for anyone that's in, in a relationship. Um, you know, whether it's like just friends or, or like, you know, your partner, your spouse, because, you know, obviously communication is an important thing and just, it's a neat way to, um, turn that into a game. Yeah. Like one of the coolest thought, like, well, one of the coolest things that I thought was really cool about it was the fact that, cause you have the cards with the like four, whatever, five different rules. And when you have the heart to heart and you're able to tell someone one of the rules, like I sat there for a minute and thought about okay, so far in the game, it's like, you know, you've kind of picked up on little things here and there about, like, what's going on with your partner and kind of, like, trying to figure out, okay, well, they obviously are, like, placing, like, this color here a lot or doing this. Like, there's something going on with their patterns of changing stuff that what they need. So I'm like, what would be the most important thing on my end that they probably are going to have a hard time picking up on that I can tell them as like the most important rule for them to understand through, what I through need. your actions. Yeah, because like the I needed like a green, I don't even remember. It was like a green object in every room or something. And I think like Tim started to like kind of figure that out throughout because I kept placing like a green object, having a green object in every room and doing that, but having a different, unique style of object in every room was something that I think it would be a lot harder to like pick up at just like first glance so that was the one I went with telling Tim about because I was like it once he understands that I feel like that was one of the more complex ones to get around whereas the other stuff was a little easier to Did pick up figure on it yeah. out how I, you guys do I was I was surprised that even with uh Justin totally misreading uh his rules to the point where it would have been impossible for us to satisfy both of our sets <laughs> Thank you. We, st- we still made it about like 90 95% there yeah, we would have won, like, 
like probably three or four turns before the end of the game if I hadn't fucked it up for us. <laughs> but I Classic misread Justin Carter. Well, it's because the way I read it, and PJ backed me up in saying that because he had the same scenario I had that it was confusing at first because they didn't necessarily explain like this entire thing is the house and then these like and even though obviously it is the house and then the four like sections are rooms the way i was reading it was the rules pertain to the house as a whole but the way i read it was that it was talking about each individual room so like when it said that like the right wall or whatever had to be wall the white God fucking the right wall had to be right had to, on the right. Yes, <laughs> had to write the right. It had to be read on the walls, and I was thinking that all the rooms had to be basically because the wall was on the right. So I thought it all had to be read. <laughs> we just spent five minutes Justin trying to justify himself as to why he did a terrible job. Fuck. <laughs> Yes, so the right wall was red, and I fucked and it up. no lamps on the left. Yes, and no lamps on the Which left. Which really but challenging. only, like, one, and yeah, when I read it, it got to a point where it was, like, impossible yeah. because of what was going on with Tim and me to meet both of those. Mm-hmm. So I was confused until she basically explained. She was like, no, she, was, she knew the scenario as the lady who was mm-hmm. running the thing, and she was like, no, you're, like, good. And I, like, didn't understand it first. And I was like, what? And I realized I'd been reading the card wrong the entire time. And I was like, dude, like, I really fucked this over. <laughs> All right, Tim, did you come? You've had time? Did you think about? Oh, yeah, that one's fine. <laughs> that one, uh, let, me, let me just talk about another one uh, that was cool and memorable. Uh, tell, us about, tell us about playing the queen and Killer Queen Black. Oh, well, we're, we're, yeah, speaking we're, of doing terrible, <laughs> hey, I, I won one round. You jumped at the fact of being the queen, and then you. Hey, so I, I got pretty good at playing as the queen in the uh, arcade version. But also, in the arcade version, I would get a big boost of uh, energy because we had the best. Um, like, like, to enter an arcade. The best people. No, well, around. to enter an arcade tournament, you have to have a name for your, uh, your group. Uh, we, we would always play as the, the Miss Beehivers. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. I see what you did there. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Queen is, would be a Mrs. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> you're, the reason why, you're the reason why they're endangered right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's the California fighter. They all flew away after we made that joke. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this one just has, it has very different uh, mechanics. The other guy was doing surprisingly good by spamming. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and to be honest, like, Indicate has so many good games. Now I'm talking about Indicate, I'm not talking about the night games. <laughs> <laughs> talking, Indicate itself, the actual people, you know, yeah. actually uh, showcasing, you know, whether it's different messages, different, like, uh, ways of playing, mm-hmm. you know. There's, there's the one game, um, Blind Spot, where there's no graphics. The entire thing is just a black screen on an iPad, well, and you know, have to yeah. play by touch. You're feeling vibration to tell you, like, if you're getting close in proximity to a particular spot on the screen, and it, it's actually a really chills in game. Like, just put headphones on and sit there and just kind of slide your fingers around and find these different spots. Super innovative. Yeah, well, like War Tweets. Or tweets. A game of just about like stopping missiles from Donald Trump (laughs) based off his actual tweets from Twitter. Actual tweets on Twitter is actually like tapped into his real Twitter feed. It's that is fascinating. Yeah, it it gamifies responding to tweets, uh, to Trump's angry tweets. It's crazy. I'm surprised you didn't talk about uh, Patrick's Paradox. Patrick's Paradox. So that's the game that did box audience choice awards and it absolutely deserves it. That game is like. Box Boy and Baba is You on, like, turning your head upside down. It's so insane. It's about moving boxes and putting boxes in boxes. And, like, going and, like the room that you're in is, like, mirrored inside of a smaller version of that room, and you're sliding that whole room around. Like, it's mind-bending. It is, like, puzzle heaven, honestly. So Or hell, depending on how you look well, at it. how good you are at puzzles. <laughs> yes, yes. But, no, that game was just glorious. I, I instantly needed that game. And the crazy, the great finisher was after I was, I was like, I feel like I was at the end of the demo and I beat all the levels 
and I just saw this one last thing at the end. I thought it was a wind condition. I was like, oh, let me just go there. I slid in there, and I slid smaller into a whole new set of levels. I was like, through the controller. That's it. Oh. <laughs> I'm done. Justin, do you want to talk about that VR game that we played? Well, yeah, I was going to say that one was funny enough because, like, everyone's listening off different games, yeah. which I thought was pretty cool that, like, Everyone had had a different favorite game, and that was my favorite game. Was what was it called? The though? Under Presents. The Under Presents. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, did that. Which I'm almost sad that Tim didn't have as good of an experience oh, with yeah, it I as me and Miranda did. It glitched the hell out on me. Yeah, <laughs> Matt didn't get to play it. No, actually, yeah, neither of us got to play it. Yeah, which is crazy because me and Brandon played it. Brandon got further than I did because I got kind of stuck because I wasn't sure what to do. But and then you, I heard you explaining how you got stuck, and then they told you how to do it, and so I just kept going. I yeah, like, oh, okay. I would have gone back if I hadn't already taken the headset off at that point and like gave it back to them. But it was really cool. It was very trippy. Like I kept comparing it to like it was like a cough syrup fueled fever dream of being in this weird fantasy world and you're this like masked black figure and it has like some groundhog day elements where it's like you have 60 seconds to do something and then the day restarts but then there's like a almost like a shadow copy whatever of yourself from the previous 60 seconds doing stuff and then you like have to reenact new stuff and then like you're using you're using the previous actions that you used and then like like basically once you figure it out you say oh two people need to push these buttons at the same time so i need to go hold one of the buttons right now and wait for time to reset and then when it resets i go push the other button because the past version of myself is going to go push that first button and so you're like using the time loop in your advantage it was it was really cool yeah it's like you use old copies of yourself to help present you and then you can like take the mask off your face and like put stuff on it and spin it around to rewind time. Yeah. And I was having fun just sticking around because when you put on the mask, it like makes it kind of zero gravity and you can like slowly pull the mask away and it's still floating there suspended in face like space and you can like bink it up and stuff and it like floats around and then after a while it like times out and then just like falls back to the ground like nothing happened. Some of the cooler things too in the game were like simple stuff like the way that you navigate around the world. Um, I haven't played any VR games really aside from this. Like I've maybe put on a headset at a demo somewhere randomly, but I don't remember. And um, I've actually always been fascinated with VR, but I, I just haven't had a chance to really get into it. And one of the things I know that they did that they were explaining was kind of something that they came up with um, was in order to navigate around the world instead of like clicking the joystick left, right, up, down, whatever, to kind of like jolt your character in different directions. Uh, you can do that to a certain degree, but there's a better method they came up with where you hold one of the face buttons, like I don't remember if they're A and B or what they are on those controllers. Uh, this was with the Oculus Quest. But uh, you squeeze one of those face buttons and you just pull like at the environment, like you're dragging yourself through space and it just kind of like drags you forward. And depending on how hard and fast you pull, it, it pulls your character <laughs> at that speed. So so it feels more natural. Like, you're kind of, like, really controlling how quickly well, you want it's to like, around. Yeah, it's like you're pinching the world, yeah. and then you release, and it slingshots you towards the area that you pinched. Yeah. And I think it's it's not that it's <clears throat> that it's a natural feeling, but um, other types of motion in VR will cause motion sickness because mm -hmm. it makes your body think that you're moving when you're not really. Yeah. Um, but this... Uh, like motion that the visuals that you get from it are like alien enough from what your eyes are used to seeing or I don't think your brain knows to like categorize it as motion sickness. Yeah because like the area on the edges of the screen like everything kind of warps to yeah. a certain degree and the guys were explaining to us that that they did that very specifically because like there's all this science that tells you that um, if the if the sides of the screen move at the same rate as the center of the screen, it really gives you that nauseating motion sickness feeling. And so to trick the brain, you need to have images that kind of remain fixed on the sides. And yeah. so they kind of do like this combination where everything just sort of stretches. So the sides essentially don't really change much. And then once you reach your destination, then it snaps and everything looks clear again. So it worked really well. I didn't have any, any motion sickness issues whatsoever. I don't think that effect would work well for most VR games, but it works well for this one because it has like the trippy aesthetic. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Dude, one of the coolest things I thought too was the fact that I had never even heard of this and I thought it was pretty unique was the fact that they have like actors that they're hiring and stuff to actually show up 
in the world at like designated times and stuff so it's like you don't even actually know that they're actors like to you they could just be ai but they could also potentially be real people and it's kind of like up to you to kind of even figure out like if they are a real person that you're interacting with or not they can actually talk to you and everything yeah Yeah. they can like lead you places and like do whatever which is like pretty wild i was like it's kind of like the first kind of thing i've heard mixing like real life like events and stuff like people inside of like video games like that yeah, it was really cool. And they said they've been working on it for, like, two years. Yeah, I thought that game, they'd been working on it for, like, at least six, uh, and they said two years. Oh, uh, year, yeah, a year and a half, I think they said. It's, they're made by a pretty established VR company. I can't remember the name of their first game, is, but, yeah, they're getting funded by Oculus themselves. Nice. Uh, yeah, they released a game on the, um, the Go. Is that okay. is that an indie? Is it being funded? Uh, That's true, actually. Huh? Technically, it's not. But, I mean, it's not like Oculus is, like, a huge publisher or anything but they no, but they're not small well, but they're the, like 15 person team or so but they're supporting indie games so they're indie yeah. <laughs> they're at indie games man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, my, yeah four years my, ago so is nintendo's microsoft and my, sony well my yeah my my boss at Kurt network actually submitted our game to uh um to indie and he was he was sad when they rejected it because a game get, like being developed and published by Character Network, I guess, was over the line. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason, for this other, uh, this other developer, I guess it wasn't. Okay. Mm. That's cool. <clears throat> now, what did you think was like? What was like one of the? Well, I say worst, but like <laughs> your like least favorite things. Worst. That indie... Worst memories about it that will haunt you forever. Other, other top, than other top than anything we've already worst mentioned. Worst indie yeah. moments of twenty nineteen. <laughs> The award ceremony? Holy crap, it was boring. It That's was, what I was going to say. It was. It was. It was. It was. Dude, it was. Their interactions were so forced. The, the, jokes, the writing wasn't great. The, yeah. the joke yeah. writing yeah, wasn't yeah, great. Was like, I think yeah. they at least had, like, they, they obviously had projectors. They had, like, 40 projectors set up yeah. on the, ga- the game night tonight. If sure. they just, like, used a projector and, like, showed, like, screenshots of the games they were talking about, That's it would have been yeah. a little bit. Yeah, that like, would have been well, cool. And like, so they're just, like, talking about games, and it's, like, nobody knows what they're talking about yeah. most of the time. Well, and it's, like, the only thing I had to compare it to was 2015, too. And it's, like, one, they had the projector stuff so you could see what games they're talking about, but you also had a list of all the nominees. Like, I had no idea who was even in any of these categories, just the winners. No, so I, was, like, I, I agree. What, I'm not saying it's better than 2015 by any stretch yeah. of imaginary... But the thing is, like, they're being awarded, like, the context of the whole thing, too, is hard to call it boring. Like, we're there for the celebrate people who have, like, done an amazing job with some of these games, too. And to be like, ah, I don't care. It's like, well, dude, like, these kids are pretty awesome, and a lot of them are pretty mean. Yeah, it's not even that, like... I mean, it would be awesome if I knew anything at all about who was getting the award. It's not even, like, I didn't care. It's just I was more just disappointed because I felt like it could have been handled a lot better. And it could have been better, but... But it wasn't know. bad by any stretch. But it wasn't bad, and I'm just happy that I got <laughs> to meet. Great. I'm just happy that I got to meet Ashley Birch. So That's true. It was like the awesome. highlight of my trip. Yeah, Brandon like ran up and was like, "You want to take a selfie with me?" And she was like, "Security!" And he snapped a picture and ran away <laughs> real quick. Yeah. That did not happen. No, no, she was super cool actually. Well, <laughs> you weren't there. You weren't there because you guys were so bored that you took off. Well, it's because we <laughs> got shawarma. Or well, we got curry, and I had like a gallon of Thai tea, which my body can't process dairy, so I had the rocket shits when I got back. Oh, that's smart. Yeah, well, we're but I knew I'd be back coming first. back to the Airbnb. So you could shit in the bathroom before we got here. Yeah, and right in the sink, which drains. <laughs> Speaking That's of our... It drains us a little. Oh. Talk about our Airbnb yeah, experience. Yeah, the Airbnb oh, was... I, I'll tell you what, like, whoever took the pictures did a very flattering job. Because <laughs> they, like, knew all the right angles. Like, in the pictures, all those cabinets have handles. <laughs> And it's like, I almost think they took the handles off other cabinets <laughs> around here, attached to them, or they photoshopped and used the clone tool and just cloned <laughs> things on where there weren't, because... Yeah, there's, they, just, there's holes where the handles should be. Well, yeah, there's Did holes. they also make it appear that the kitchen is an actual rectangle and not this weird trapezoid well, where you, like, trap someone in as soon as you enter? Well, yeah, because they never took a straight shot picture from the kitchen. It was always kind of like 
be behind the counter of the kitchen, or you just caught like a yeah. glimpse of it. They knew all about the rule of thirds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and in the bedroom, I thought it was funny too, because like you can totally tell they had like three like little target vertical decorative mirrors, and there's only one. But yeah, on the yeah. wall, you can see the outline from where there was obviously two other mirrors <laughs> that got broken from like people, I'm assuming, banging in the room and hitting yeah. the wall. And don't get too loud in here, because uh, yeah, very close quarters. Yeah, the everybody else. angry Armenian guy from downstairs will come up and yell at you because he's like gotten two hours of sleep from hitting his wife. He's what? probably not at all Armenian <laughs> or does any of those things. Yeah, yeah well, it doesn't help when he's <laughs> entering this place. You have to hear this loud, like, bang yeah, for, it's like, 25 <laughs> seconds. Okay, okay, okay. It's literally like a fucking prison. <laughs> let, me, let me explain. So, so it, did any of you guys see that movie with Matt Damon, Downsizing, where he gets shrunk and goes into that? Like, I saw oh, the trailer. I know the trailer, but I didn't see oh, it. Oh, man. Well, it's that down, movie... It's yeah, The Martian. That, no. <laughs> so, that movie <laughs> is... <laughs> that movie <laughs> is nothing like what the trailers make you think. It looks like it's going to be a fun comedy, and it's not. It actually gets, like... Super real and super weird and like kind of sad. It looks like it's kind of dramaish. It kind of is, yeah. Well, if anybody has seen that movie, like for the people who are listening to this, the the other one or two besides those of us on the podcast right now, um, it, like if you picture the like weird tenement type place that like all of the people that have no money in this like small world live, that's basically where we're staying right now. We're staying in this weird place. It's like multi levels and like people's trash is just piled up outside of their their doors and there's like broken bicycles everywhere. <laughs> it's weird. It's really weird. But then again, I've also stayed in worse. <laughs> so <laughs> having like your own shower and bathroom. Oh, GDC in 2016. Yeah. Yeah, we stayed in this weird <laughs> closet. I say it's, I call it a hostel but I guess it was a closet. But yeah, you like walk in and like the door's hitting the sink, which is <laughs> fucking behind the door for whatever reason. And like there's like one bed and then there's like the little stand with the TV on it, like pressed together at the end of the bed. It's more like when you open the door, the view that you see is everything that's in there. <laughs> it's like if you imagine living in a 10 foot by like, 12 foot space that's no, like pretty much what 10 foot was. by like 6 foot space <laughs> whatever it's 10 foot that's the whole space of the bed the single bed <laughs> you have room to stand up <laughs> the other room is just so the door could go like perpendicular to the bed dude and then <laughs> parallel to the bed. since we've been here too Los Angeles is also on fire which marks oh, yeah. the second time I've gone on vacation and the city I've been in has been on fire which yeah. I'd love to actually like go somewhere that isn't like burning to the fucking ground. Well, that'd be great here. if you didn't set every place on you go on fire. Well, <laughs> my, you got a play test we've done. I can hardly call it a vacation. Oh, that, that well, yeah, it's pretty exhausting. Yeah. yeah, but also not having to deal with four dogs for a week is like a vacation to me. Or seven. Or two rowdy kids. Yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. whatever Tim has. Goat. <laughs> yeah, um, Tim's goat. goat. I don't have a goat currently. <laughs> he lost them. Um, so how like for the week, like how did how do you think like all the playtesting like went and stuff for like how did it go for boss battle? It went really me? well actually. Uh, you know, the first day we were just kinda getting our bearings down, but we still had a good outcome. You know, we talked to a lot of good people that gave us some good like kind of advice and so that really sharpened up our demoing. And so we kind of got it down to a science where we can get people in it. I mean, our game typically takes like, you know, we're on the boxes 45 to an hour, but it's like an hour to you know, an hour, 20 minutes or something. But we were able to get that bad boy down to like 30 minutes to even down to like 25 minutes in some games, you know? And so that, that really helped kind of be able to churn people in and out. We get, and then today we were getting people who weren't even playing the game who wanted to give them their our information to learn more about the game. So that was like kind of a first for us too. So it was it was a good day today. Yeah, I know. I can sell everybody's information on the internet now. Yes. <laughs> yes. So a good weekend, I should say. Sign them up for those twenty four hour fitness emails. Yeah. <laughs> need to get some money for all the art we need for the game. <laughs> yeah, right. But yeah, no, people were pretty pumped for the game. Like, people were genuinely excited. And uh, that was that was very exciting. You know, usually we have to like really pry people to just play our game and then people were waiting. I mean, yesterday was interesting where we're like, Yeah, we're all done with playtests, so, like 
are you seriously not going to let us play a test? We're like, okay, if you absolutely want to play right now, Jeez. we'll set up. And it's like, we've never had someone like almost force us into a play test. I know. I was excited for you guys too that you actually had like, we were able to get like all the art on the cards and stuff to show that off. Because it was like, I think the first time where you had the majority of the art on the actual cards for people yeah, to play yeah, with. Yeah. So probably that was really cool. Because yeah, it makes houses. it look so much more complete and stuff. Yeah. And it, like, there's real like eye candy on the table yeah. pretty much. So. No, yeah. And we got a lot of compliments for the art too. So mm-hmm. we really, we definitely took the Yeah, I heard one of the guys, I think it was earlier today, when he was talking about, he was commenting on or complimenting you guys on the art. And uh, he was like, yeah, this is great. He's like, don't change this. Don't change this. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Do you, do your impersonation of PJ. When, oh, yeah, when you moved yeah. across the room, oh, Brandon man. was like, I was like, man, I was like, because he was saying, like, like, you can hear PJ from, like, anywhere in the game tasting area. <laughs> well, my favorite part of, of when PJ, like, demos the game is he gets people to sit down and kind of, like, brings them in all, like, nice and friendly. He's like, okay, okay, so um, we're going to play boss battle, so you're going to pick a job, and you're going to be, okay, so you're the thief, and you're the mage, and you're the priest, and then this guy's going to be the boss. Okay, boom, this is boss battle. Okay, so this is what you do. And it's like, suddenly very intense. Like, <laughs> screaming. And, like, I think people are just afraid to get up and leave. <laughs> <laughs> and, and at one point, the indie game people were filming you as you were going like rat really? shit on these like three Asian kids like sitting there like they're trying to figure out like what the fuck like this word even is and people like okay guys you kids you 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 what the hell are you even holding there bro like, you gotta just speaking of Asian kids one of the most ruthless bosses we've ever seen was this like quiet little Asian girl. She's like, oh, I'll play the boss. Okay. <laughs> she murdered those people. She was like, I don't give a fuck. I'm going to mass murder everybody. She's, <laughs> she is a real kaiju from Japan. Yeah. Like, as Matt and I were watching, we were like, oh my God. She, is like, <laughs> she was like, I'm going to kill you. And I got backup kills just in case you blocked that. And someone did block it. It's like, yeah, that's my kill. And I got another one just, just in case you blocked that one too. You're going to die. <laughs> and it was an awful death. <laughs> no, we've never seen anyone who plays the boss first time. Most of the time, they're like, yeah. oh, Oh, I'm gonna kind of be nice, and it's like, no, this person murdered all for the way the heroes so cool. yeah. in three rounds. If you do like 10 damage in a round, that's like a ton of damage. She was like, 21 damage to everybody. <laughs> oh, by the way, I got 16 damage waiting for you after that. <laughs> Bam! Oh, I got another 10. You're like, what the hell? Oh, PJ, you're gonna make the angry Armenian man come. I'm sorry. <laughs> and this is by round three. <laughs> I hear if you yell three times in the bathroom, the angry Armenian <laughs> 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 if you knock three times on the mirror, he knocks back. <laughs> but needless to say, it was exciting, and she did give us her information. I think she liked the game. Mm-hmm. Just speaking of the since you brought up the Asian, because I had this one um, play testing negative space, and because there's like the for spikes and stuff, there's like the pixel like a uh, leniency on either side mm-hmm. and stuff, and he was consistently manipulating that. Oh, so I can't even do that. And what? like there's parts where he's like falling and like he would have that pixel just clip the edge to like land on it or stop. And he did it like three times like in a row. And I was like, how? That reminds me, that reminds me so those, hard. It reminds me of like those blood <laughs> hell players yeah. that like yeah. those patterns are constantly clipping every single piece of the bullet. Like the, those are the only people I can think of that are like ridiculous like that Damn. must have been one of those guys yeah dude it was wild i was like dude i can't even do that it's shit. pretty cool to see like the the different ways that people play games because you're so used to like playing it the way that you play it or watching like a couple mm-hmm. people play but like seeing just one person after another come and experience the game and, and you're just like oh wow I, so that's how people play it okay well we're cool. used to a lot of bad players mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you know um, but then when you start seeing a good one, you're like, holy cow. Or <laughs> so you're I like they get it. <laughs> I, I made the mistake the first day of, uh, you know, I brought my demo for Final Fantasy Renaissance and I like, it's, it's a totally playable demo, but like, I didn't really give any thought to how hard it is to play. If you don't give the players kind of like something sort of like, a <clears throat> not tutorial, but like you you know kind of prep things for them and and whatever if you just you like have it all set up yeah all right, you if, dive in. yeah so the first day you know i just said okay you know here's new game and here's continue and people would go like start a new game and they choose their characters and in the first final fantasy and the same thing in my remake like you don't start with anything you have no spells you have no weapons you have no armor and nobody knows that if they don't know how the game originally worked so they just start going out in the field and just getting their ass killed 
and it's not very fun. And so people <laughs> listen, and so I'd have to explain to people how to play, or I'd like take the controller. I'm like, here, let me get, let me buy some stuff for you. And it just that was tedious. And yeah, so that so after the first night, I went and changed it and created like a special indicate demo build where you automatically start with like a bunch of starting gear and you get a couple levels and stuff like that. And, and that helped a lot afterwards. You actually had a lot of people. You people loved your game, dude. They did. They did. Like yeah. you were pretty nervous about it, but I mean, people yeah, you were like really, yeah. really questionable about it the like, first day. Like it was all like a speakeasy of like, well, like you can't play Final Fantasy. <laughs> like, it doesn't. Right. It doesn't help that like the first people that literally the first people that saw my game were two like lawyers <laughs> that were like so <laughs> they're like so what are you planning to do with this and i was like well um obviously no <laughs> i was like obviously i can't make money off it because i don't own the rights and they're all like no obviously i can't make money off of it right. wink wink wink, wink. <laughs> yeah no, so i had a really good conversation with them and they're just like yeah you're probably okay as long as it's only for educational purposes i was like yeah okay so <laughs> you're like the game's yeah. free but for a 30 dollar donation you can download it <laughs> right right no <laughs> this is not being recorded, right? Um, yeah, no, but it, it got better after that. Um, I had a lot of people that were super interested in it, and I actually had one guy the second day that um, that we were there, and we set up in that like front area, and like I was all like nervous about like setting up in the front because I'm like more people are gonna see it, and Shit, I don't I know if I'm gonna get in trouble. I was like, Brandon, shut the fuck up. You're here to show the game. Like, well, there was one guy. There was one guy that came up at one point and made me feel awesome because he's like, oh, he's like. I heard about this yesterday. I was looking for you, but you weren't up here because, like, we'd gone to lunch. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, shit, okay. So, yeah, I got, like, a... There's one guy that came back, like, twice today. He, like, played a game. He, like, started his own party and named them all, like, what he wanted to and everything. He, like, took time and, like, was really into it because he, like, really likes the, the original game. And he got, like, past the first, like, beat Garland, the first boss, and, like, got the bridge to go to the rest of the world. And then he, like, saved his game because he had to go with his kid and play other games. And then he came back like later in the afternoon and was like, all right, I'm going to play some more. And his game was still there. And he was like, oh my God, yes, my guys are still here. And he was like so excited. And, like, was that the guy with the dead mouth shirt? Yes. Yeah. 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 He was cool. Yeah. Yeah. I met a lot of cool people. Um, met other people that are doing uh, other like remakes of other retro games, believe it or not. There's a guy that's remaking Mega Man in Unity, like the first Mega Man. And there's a guy who's making a Metal Gear Solid uh, remake for the Game Boy Color. Like, I guess there's a version on the Game Boy Color, and he's remaking that in Unity also. Um, so, yeah, I got information for these guys so we can kind of, like, trade notes and stuff. So, yeah, that was really cool. I got a really good response. Can, can share legal notes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you all have the same court date. <laughs> <laughs> and the same lawyer. <laughs> oh, God. Well, you know, there's, like, uh, recently I played... Oh, what, was, what was that game called? It's the one that's... Like Super Mario Brothers, but they mix in like characters from other Nintendo games. Hmm. Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario Bros. Boogan. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, no crap. What is it called? Uh, it's like you can be Mega Man, but like you're you know playing Mega Smash Man. Brothers. <laughs> yeah, Smash Brothers. Yeah, Smash Brothers. Where you're like you're shooting the Goombas with your eat, and you get like a instead of a mushroom, you like get like subspace in the series. It's like a flash game. It originally was a flash game, yes, oh, okay. but they've recently been remaking it, either in Game Maker or Unity. I don't remember which, but like I that's, think I remember. It's like you can play a lot of the classic. Yeah, it got, it got it got a ton of press back when it first came out. Uh, yeah, I can't. Uh, oh, but it's I remember what you're but it's about. but it's been floating around and it's still floating around and they're still adding updates to it and people like a lot of people play it. Um, uh, speaking of Unity, I was pleasantly surprised to learn how many people use Unity for their games and how many diverse, like completely different types of games and like super advanced games um, people are making. And I'm like every game I played, that was like my first question. I said, "So what are you using to make it?" And usually I'm like, "How long have you been working on it? Mm -hmm. Is it released?" But yeah, like so many people are like, "Oh, we're making Unity." I was like wow, awesome. Like, everybody's making stuff in Unity. A lot of people are. Yeah, and it all looks different. Totally and, different. Like, like yeah. Weird controllers with yeah. it. and like You got VR, you got 3D, you got 2D, you got all kinds of just AR. crazy stuff. Yeah, AR. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was neat. Yeah, um, QDD's definitely kind of taking over yeah. game development at the moment. So, Ted, actually, were you showing a game while you were here today? Or no. Time? no. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, my boss considered it, but uh, oh, right, our game already came out, so I don't really know what we would have gotten out of showing it off. It already came out, and it's already free. Nice. Nice. <laughs> if you listeners you have... It. Yeah, I'll just give a, 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 a shameless plug. <laughs> if you have a uh, VR headset, 
uh, go on Steam and get a game called Cartoon Network Journeys VR and leave some uh, things about it. I made the gesture game. Can you play as Uganda Knuckles? You, uh, no, no that's, that's a different VR game. <laughs> Well, I will be getting an Let's Oculus Quest out. by Christmas, most likely the latest, and I will definitely check it out. Right on. Is Quest the standalone one? Yeah, the the, the wireless. Yes, yeah, so you'll yeah. need you'll need the link. Oh, yes, I will. But I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, Justin, I think you're the last one. Like, how did negative space go? It went really good. I got a lot of play, especially today. Dude, today was packed. It was, yeah. crazy it was crazy. Dude, I didn't take a break. It was yeah, dude. Yeah, I didn't eat lunch. And I the only thing I had was when we had burger for dinner. I ate both was, of my Cliff bars. Yeah, I was like two fisting goldfish while we waited to play that decor game because I was starving. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, but, dude, your booth actually this whole weekend was stacked. Yeah, dude, pretty much. Yeah, people like waiting back, around. Yeah, dude, back yeah. to back, like it was like Friday, Thursday. What day is Thursday was the first yeah, day. Thir- yeah, Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Thursday was the first day. Yeah. Thursday was like pretty was packed slow. from like it was slow at first. It was slow yeah. from like like at ten. But, but slow then, for you, dude, was still two people sitting at the chair. Well, playing. that's true. true. Like ev- I will say every day before ten, before it even technically started, I was like I had people in the chairs because someone would just be like standing there kinda of looking around. So I'm like, Hey, you're not doing anything, you wanna play a game? And they're like uh sure and i'm like cool here you go and the hands the control i'm like you're not doing anything you, you can play the game so that was cool and yeah like thursday it kind of like picked up you know a little bit more in the afternoon after like everyone kind of had lunch and decided to kind of mosey on upstairs and stuff it got a little busier and stuff and then saturday or friday yeah i'm like all the day. mix up yeah so friday was a fucking ghost town afternoon like after 12 hit, like, we went back. I was like, oh, man, I kind of want to go back up and, like, possibly, like, show negative space some more. And I went up there, and it was just dead. Yeah, there's and I was like, schools that came. There's, like, a high school, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a high school, and I looked at some other schools, and then that was busy then, but then as soon as those left, nothing. Yeah. Yeah, just, so I was like, it's not even worth setting up everything again. I'd rather just go play games at that point. So I kind of walked around and played some stuff. But that's what pissed me off, too, was the... uh like, the nominees and stuff weren't even, like, open. Like, we went to play, like, it was, like, 12. And, like, oh, yeah, this room's, like, not open until, like, yes. 2.30. So, I'm, like, like, why? <laughs> like, I'm, like, yeah, there was a big gap of just, like, it was kind of a lull period because you couldn't play the nominee games. And then there was, there was no traffic. traffic. No traffic for our work. Yeah. So, it's just, like, okay, well, I guess we're just walking around. And yeah, it could be a little bit better organized. Yeah, something. but then today was the complete opposite. Yeah, today yeah. it was, like, from, like, 10 a.m. to, like, even when like we even we had it, like, it felt it felt like you know like Comic Con it was just like constant traffic. Yeah, even when we left, which was like at like I think it was like around four. two was it four. It was four. I think it was close to four. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I was like I thought it was like two, but yeah, it was like crazy because like every time like I was like oh man well I still want to go kind of play some stuff so I was like as soon as these people are done I'll close it real quick and get but it was like I never had the chance because as soon as someone got up like mm-hmm. someone immediately swooped in. And half the time I felt bad because people were playing on like later levels because I didn't even get the chance to like reset the game before they started playing. So, <laughs> I didn't know that. Dude, like, this yeah, is evil. Dude, this one dude came in on 0-7. Oh and my goodness. I was like, and I was like, I'm going to offer to like reset it for him, but he kept playing. So I was like, wow. all right, I'll just let him. So he got like halfway through 0-7 and then like gave up. And then that's like next like little like Asian mom came to play and she was like, uh, and I was like, yeah, no, let me reset this before <laughs> you start playing. Let me reset this for you because I felt so bad for the one dude because he was probably like, dude, this is your first level. Like, what the fuck, man? Like, it's so hard. But no, it was really good. And like watching <laughs> people play, the main thing I kind of got out of it was just kind of like more networking and like spreading the word, but also getting to watch people play. Um, I tweaked like a couple little parts of levels Five, because that zero six a little bit easier yes yes i made actually some, the second time you made it easier well and even before indicate i made even some of the That's beginning saying, levels yeah, yeah a yeah. little easier and then i found a like fps bug with a persistent object that i didn't know about and probably would have never found did that most, fix work um as far as i know uh, a lot of people because i've kept forgetting to reset it to have the level display up but a lot of people were playing with like the timer and death counter yeah. ends up, but they weren't playing with the level thing up. But 
but as far as I know, it worked. So, Good. I mean, there wasn't any frame rate issues at all today, yeah. so that was nice. And you're going for even more hours in that first day, so you're probably good. Yeah, dude. I mean, even, like, I felt bad, too. It was funny because I had one of the, like, the a lot of the NDK volunteers the one day were playing, and it was, like, funny because, like, well, no one's around, and then it started getting busy, and, like, the one dude's like, uh, dude, why don't you go over? I'm trying to play this thing. <laughs> it's like, he's supposed to be working, and he's over here fucking around. We had that yesterday, yeah. too, where... Uh, Leah, who was super helpful, by the yeah. way. Shout she's out like, to she's Leah. Like, yeah, Leah. Yeah, she's yeah. like running that whole area. The, yeah, she was yeah, scurrying she was, around there. Yeah, and the, she's a silent MVP there. She's uh, awesome. Yeah, she was awesome. Anyway, yeah, she tells the one guy, yeah, could go ahead and train this dude. And then the dude stands like, yo, just go ahead and walk around. I'm, I'm busy playing right now. <laughs> He's like busy playing boss battle. He's like, I want to finish my boss run. <laughs> so it's <laughs> like funny, like... I was like, if you gotta go, you gotta go. No, 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 I'm still playing. Yo, just, just this is what you gotta do. Okay, bye. All right. <laughs> and then get back to the game. So, same thing. Like, that, that was yesterday. That's what got, got slow. So. Yeah, yeah, today was like pretty packed, and there was like a lot of stuff. I didn't even get to play any more of the uh, NDK Dominee stuff, and I heard that room was just, that room was packed. But one day we went, and I can only imagine what it was the oh, day yes, after yeah. the awards and stuff, after bringing a lot of attention to like other games. That one room with all the just tables, the the tables lined up like that, where like the RPG game was. Oh, like, yeah, a lot you of can't even walk through there. You couldn't, yeah, it's really hard. Well, to yeah, I felt bad because yeah, having like a huge backpack and yeah. laptop bag, I'm like, yeah. excuse me, oh, so, and there's like three people standing there, knocking like, oh, people. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, I mean, it was so packed, I mean, some people didn't even know what the hell they were doing for their games, because people weren't like, like I said, like, the game that actually won the best of show, was it the, the Dicey, three? Dicey Dungeons, Dicey Dungeons, Dungeons. 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 Yeah, that was the best of that one, best I of show. I didn't even see it the first yeah. day, so, because it was so hard to get to it. When you guys were here in 2015, because I, I love Dicey Dungeons, I was really surprised that that would take, uh, the major award from something like this. I was surprised, too. From, from what I understand, like, like that's that's the kind of game to more like win an award from like the IGF or something like during GBC the uh, indie game festival. So what I've learned, the games that typically win, indicate win IGF. In fact, the two times I went to GDC, the game that won was the same game that won. Because I thought I thought like IGF and those kind of were more of like a, a celebration of like traditional good game design and like kind of the marketable. Side You're right. Of Dicey games. Dungeons is more mainstream than like anything else. Yeah. Because like her story won in 2015, and that's not a normal. No, game. her her well, her story was very uh, like critically and financially successful. And well, it was, but what I'm saying is that... Did you say that one indicated? That one indicated. Oh, that one, like, everything at IGF also. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. It was indicated yeah. first. They went to IGF and just destroyed everything. Oh. Right? So that's... And the same thing in 2012. I'm trying to remember what won, but the same game that I saw in that indicate 11 and GDC 12 just went in. Oh, uh, okay. I guess yeah. I was wrong then. Like, because, yeah, this was my first year at Indicate, and um, in the past, I've, like, checked their website... Uh, I think way back when I might have actually submitted a game to NDK too. Um, but uh, my impression was that it was like more of a celebration of like the like obtuse like like hyper artsy like unmarketable kind of like like show it to like an average person. And, like, and you're right about that. Who plays Call of Duty or something, and they're gonna be like, what what that what that? You're, you're absolutely and you're absolutely right. That's normally how the other awards are but the one who like gets the grand award or like the the best mm -hmm. of show kind of award yeah that's normally something that's at least kind of marketable or is going to be something yeah and you do you see the the like whoa this is like indie indie, right. indie like stuff, that yeah. um uh honest memento or honest memento yeah that's like an was experience one of yeah one of the winners last night and yeah that's a strange game like it, it's it's cool but it's it's hardly a game as much as it's just a, a AR and VR storytelling experience, experience about yeah. a real woman's like life and her like collection oh, of art. Oh, that stuff. was one of the paintings. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's the actual the kid that created like kid the young guy that it's created his it. Grandmother. It's his grandmother. Oh, yeah. It's like a true cool. story of of her and her husband and their love of art and collection of of artwork over the years and her desire to create. Um, what was it like a like an art museum basically in China? Pretty sure. Uh, yeah. Pretty sure it's China. And, um, and and what one of the people was telling me who was there, kind of helping to explain. I don't know if she was a volunteer or what. 
uh, she was explaining is it um, she was explaining that now as a result of him creating this game and getting more exposure of her story because she had started creating this art museum some years ago and it had to get shut down or put on hold due to various factors including I guess some sort of government issues and now I guess there's a big push and there's people that are helping to make it actually a reality as a result of, of the game that he made which is super cool that's yeah cool. and that's one thing I've noticed with IndieCade games in general is that like while IGF games and GDC games are more like you know these are traditional game design and fun a lot of IndieCade games in those they're, they're a lot more than just games a lot of them they have like a lot of deeper meaning or messages that they're trying to tell stories I'll never forget uh, you know two years ago when I played um, you know uh, Bury Me My Love which, you know, did really well, too. Um, you know, and it was just, like, a story of, like, a refugee, like, just, like, you know, getting, you know, making their way through, like, Europe. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, that's that's some heavy stuff, you know? And, and there's a lot of that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, breaking communication barrier walls is one of the games that, you know, four years ago that I really loved, you know? And so indicates all about that, right? And so it's, like, using games as a medium to, like, send a message or like make the world a better place and that's kind of what most of the games are mm. but there are still some that break through that like dicey dungeons you know they're just like hey the game is just fun like the game i just played just now that like zippity like what the heck was that game called like it's like a little zip dodging everything game you know oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. the jump grid you know you still have games like that oh yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know? that's something you would see on ios and that's something you that know? you see on ios that's something that's something that you would see at IGF. Yeah. Right, that would yeah. get some kind of award. So kind of a mixture. So yeah, so you're right, um, but those games still kind of pierce through here too. Dude, um, I'll still not, like that's the big thing too. I really took away from this indicate was like a lot of the games seemed way more normal than the last indicate I went to <laughs> the 2015 one. Like in comparison, for like the weirdness scale, like. Shit was way well. There was no conceptable. I'll tell you that. <clears throat> oh, I want to give a special shout out to the game that PJ and I saw like really late in in the thing when we went inside, where you could play through the old Windows ninety eight oh screensavers in VR. So oh, like the old Windows screensaver that had the maze that was made of like brick walls yeah. and the camera just floats through it. You could play through that in VR as if you're the camera. You're walking through that maze. I was like, that's and really a little cool. swirly psychedelic. I'm like, <laughs> the why? Pipes and stuff. The pipes were there. Well, you could like kind of, fish, I don't know if you're like running along the pipes or if you're just floating in space for, for that so one. Did they like turn it into a game or is it just like you're seeing the screensaver? No, you're no, like you're, you're actually you're controlling it. Controlling you're it. pulling yourself. You're moving yourself just, through the maze. But you're just more or less like moving a camera, right? Like yeah. you're not like turning it into like a game game. No. I don't think so. I think yeah. I just going from start to finish like the camera would. But I, I didn't see anyone get all the way through it. But I was and like, speaking That's of just game, so cool. yeah, indicate it's, really it's cute. indicate games do a good job of questioning what is a game. What is a game? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm not sure. Uh, you could question that seventy five percent of things here aren't even games. That's, yeah, yeah, they're an experience. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I I love uh, making fun of like quote unquote art games. It's very it's very easy to do, mm -hmm. but at the same time, um, you know, I'm I'm very glad that they're getting made. I'm glad that people oh, absolutely. are really passionate about this kind of thing, and I'm glad that they're evolving to something more than you know what people refer to as walking simulators. Mm -hmm. There was one game on um, iOS, and I can't remember the name of it. I wish I could. I would give it a plug. Um, but it's uh, really no more than just sliding your finger up, like swiping up on the iPhone continuously and just basically revealing the next piece of this story. And you're just reading a story about this guy and this date that he went on with this girl, and it's got this real... Nice so music. Swiping up to reveal. How is that any different than like reading iBooks? It, it's not. It's not. That's, <laughs> and that's my point. Like it's. And I mean, it does have other interactive features. Like you swipe up, and every once in a while, then there's an actual like video you're watching. Uh, of, like this woman turning and looking and smiling and turning away, and then they're walking, and and it's playing this real like real nice, real relaxing music. I was totally getting into it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a cool experience. But yeah, and every once in a while, there's something more interactive. Like you have to slide something across the screen, and then it like create some cool sound effect and visual and they do neat things with light and color um but it was just again an experience it's, there's really not a game to it it's just a story and it's got several mm -hmm. chapters and you just mm. you just relax and yeah. just swipe your way through it it's cool there's a lot of that yeah yeah, yeah. and glitch 
and glitch art. Dude, we were sitting in that theater. <laughs> the theater did you watch the whole yeah. thing? Yeah, I watched part of it. Eventually, it repeats. Something, oh, started, yeah. something started the seizure on the screen, yeah. so I had yeah. to look at my phone yeah. because yeah. it was. Woman in the thing. Like people were like, "Oh, nigga, space and that." I'm like, no, "This shit's like legit, like bipolar." <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, glitch art. Which, yeah, right. speaking of experience, I always like to talk about the game I experienced okay. in 2015 at IndieCade where I had, I started playing it and it was like shapes and like whatever, and I had no idea what was going on because the dude who was showing it was talking to someone else while I was playing it. I was like sitting there for like five, six minutes trying to figure it out, and when he finally came over, I was like, oh hey, how's it going? I was like, hey, I'm like, so what am I supposed to be doing? And he like sits there and kind of looks at it for a minute, and he's like, here, hand me the controller. And I hand him the controller, and he's like, oh yeah, the game's uh, broken. <laughs> and so I'm like sitting there, and I'm like, Did I'm like, dude, I'm like, so I've been playing this for like almost 10 minutes, and it was like a fucking broken like build. And then, so that like pissed me off, so I was like, alright, whatever. So then I pick up his business card. And his business card was in this, like, illegible font. Like, it was, like, I made out of his name. The name of the game was, like, made out of triangles and shit. Like, so I he's like, even... the business card is broken, too, well, by the way. Yeah, I couldn't even read it, so I, like, straight up, like, threw that shit away. And I was just like, <laughs> dude, what a waste. And then the one dude who won, he won, like, Excellence in Audio. And he won, like, he won two Indicate Awards. He just farted the microphone. Dude, this game... If you could even call it that, it was like black and it was like black and white first person, and like me and Matt like played it for like twenty minutes trying to figure it out and had no idea. You're just like walking, everything's kind of fragmented and broken. Staticky. Yeah, and like you push a space bar and like the screen goes black and there's kind of like little floaty white pixel stuff. And I'm like, what is happening? And like the dude told us like absolutely nothing. Yeah. And yeah, I'm like, I'm like, why did this win two awards? Like I don't understand. And you know, Lion Wobbler. It's like it's well, Lion Wobbler is awesome. It's for the yeah, same. It's for the same reason why people go into art galleries and like look at a dot on a canvas and go, "It's amazing. It's staring into my soul." What a revolutionary it's, mind! It's it's what it's the experience that it, it creates. Well, in, the thing in is, your half mind. those night games are exactly what you just described. Right. It's like I don't it's, know yeah. why it's just created. What right. its purpose is? It's on the eye of the beholder. But that's the thing. It's it's. It's honestly, it's like I the think bouncy, it's, that bouncy, that bouncy mashy game or whatever it was. Yeah, we're like, oh, bouncy smashy, bouncy smashy. Uh, I yeah. think yeah. you're like, oh, that looks cool, and we start playing. Like, I don't know what's <laughs> I don't happening. Understand. I feel like we were hitting the same buttons and like having totally different experiences. <laughs> 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 maybe, maybe that's the point. I <laughs> don't even understand. But there's so many of those games. You're just like, I don't even know it's, uh, what. Yeah, it's it's a, a, an Art. allegory to life and how we can all attempt the same things but achieve different outcomes. There you go. I, I think you're reading into it more than they I intended, know. but that's... I know. Well, well, that's like, I really enjoyed the little zine maker like, and man, stuff. I just wanted to hit walls with was, hammers. Where you, where you created your photorealistic just drawing of Max. Works. Yeah, yeah. I, I, there's like a little zine maker thing where it's like a little, almost like Kid Pick Studio Deluxe mixed with like this like yeah. vaporwave looking like Windows 95 go. kind of setup of stuff. Hey, I gotta go. I'm going to karaoke. All right. All right. Wait, have before fun. you go, do you have anything for our guests? Any any last words or anything? Um, be good. Don't do crimes. I know video games and the voices in your head sometimes tell you to do crimes, but, you know, don't listen to them. You don't have to. You're your own person. The less smarter individuals won't know that you're kidding. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, he Tim. said he said don't do crimes. It's a good thing. Yeah. Tim, well, no, no, they, yeah, yeah. Which is ironic because Tim does crimes all the time. Shh. <laughs> Secret uh, crimes. Yeah. He, yeah. He carries around illegal narcotics in his purse. <laughs> the purse is a crime. You, gotta, <laughs> you, go. you almost had it. Have a good one, Tim. All right, guys. Thanks. Have fun. Yeah, Thanks for see you in Arizona again at some point. Uh, yeah, in like yeah. two, three months. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> but yeah, little Dean thing. Okay, fuck off. I was like, the Zine thing was cool, and I made a very nice Hispanic-looking mat. <laughs> they always do. Yeah. And I drew Tim with See. probably like a neck four times the length of his original neck. <laughs> and the Hamburglar. And yeah. and a duck. Yeah, there was a duck at the end. And then... It said death. 
Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. The duck said death, and then there's like a, just like a screaming like it was purple, but because the zine prints in black and white, you'd never know what color it was supposed to be. That's but, a shame. Yeah. Oh, and then there's like a will you calm down? <laughs> I wrote that <laughs> for PJ because that's his favorite catchphrase. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, dude. When we worked at the, his house for super fun stuff, he'd always like. We'd get them all Super work. fun stuff. Yeah. Super fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's that's one of the sub uh, companies, right? Yeah, uh, super fun games. games. Super yeah. fun well, stuff. Super, well, we'd work on all well, the yeah, super fun, the stuff chan- for super fun. Well, yeah, 4 chance sued us for using the awesome face, so we had to go and change the name. <laughs> there you go. Because yeah. they totally did not. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we'd get PJ all, not the exact same. We'd get PJ all like, worked up, and then eventually it'd come to a boiling point where he'd be like, will you calm down? <laughs> And that was like his yeah. kid. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't a night of working on video game stuff unless PJ was like, will you calm down? Yeah. Sounds legit. Trying to get work done. Yeah. <laughs> well, we did. We Dan, did get Dan, work done. Dan got work done. <laughs> <laughs> Moving and, on. And now he's like Moving fucking on. pounding Fagos in Michigan. Because he's a juggalo. That's where jugglers live. Everybody knows that. Yeah. <laughs> Brandon's down with the cloud. I'm I'm so down with the cloud. It yeah he is. Well, just because he smokes cornucopias and has some weed. <laughs> so how long are these things? Uh, I mean we're at. That's a rather personal question. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. How dare you? Be this? <laughs> how fucking dare you? Well, we're in his yeah. Airbnb in this tight space. Might as well get to know each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean we are at the hour and five, but it's, it's about as long. And Tim left, and Matt's stuffing his fucking face with cookies. No, they're all gone. Yeah, because he stuffed his face with fucking cookies. But, I mean, that that will probably wrap up the Indiecade special. I'm like, will you stop? Yeah, <laughs> uh, does, does anyone, any, any ending messages? Uh, Tim had his moment. Brandon, anything? This was your first Indiecade, so. Yeah, yeah this, this was, was Brandon's, he popped... It was just like most of his cherries. He popped it yes. a, in California. Yes. That indicated. Um, yeah, this was my first Indicade, and I had a really great time. Um, it, was, it was an awesome experience um, getting feedback from a lot of people on the project I'm working on, and also just seeing so many amazing games is very inspiring. Um, and I just like made contacts with a lot of really cool people, um, you know, whether whether I'll bump into them again or not, um, just some of the conversations I had with people were um, were great, you know, educational, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Dude, now that you've gone to, like, IndieCade, would you want to go to GDC next um, year? I don't know. I So I, I kind of want to find out more about, like, the differences and um, just kind of find out if I, if I think it would be, be worth going. I mean, I, I really liked uh, how IndieCade was. It, it felt like such a relaxed um you know kind of free open environment and like like you talked about like leah the person who was running the game tasting and um uh, Celia, the one that, that kind of put the yeah. whole thing together originally they've been working on this for years um they're just so down to earth and accessible they're just like walking around all over the place and and they'll just talk to you about anything they're constantly like hi how are you how are you doing and you know i i'm sure that that's not the way that a lot of these things go uh, this felt like a really close-knit community and i felt like so included you know, um, for, your first time. for my first time and yeah so i did not expect that and uh yeah i would I'm definitely looking forward to doing more indie kids and and the other ones i definitely want to you know Talk to guys like you that have been there and, and see what you think. So, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, PJ. I mean, <clears throat> so I'm the opposite of Brandon. This is my fifth NDK. Old man. Yeah, uh, eight years. <laughs> so um, it's still one of my favorite conventions. You know, I mean, even though they're different in different locations, you know, different types of games, different setups, and everything, it's still one of my favorite conventions. It's so down to earth. Every time I come to NDK, I get something out of it. In this case, we got like the most play tests I've ever gotten at an NDK, and um, and so far I'm running uh, a tally that every NDK since my second one, somebody remembers me from a previous NDK. That's cool. Ago. That's you cool. You know, in my second time, someone remembered from Music Block Attack. My third time, someone remembered from Crystal Catacombs. Third time, someone remembered for Crystal Catacombs. <laughs> and then this time, 
and this time they remember me from boss battle, including got, people like Celia who run the place, who yes. recognize you and remember that you come from Phoenix and yes. like yeah everything. So yeah, no, too. And then, yeah, today we talked to the guys like yeah, I played this game before. It was two years ago. That's awesome. At uh, you know Little Tokyo, so that it's that's really cool because I don't remember. Who Years ago, but they remember me. I so barely remember people from a year ago. I barely remember people from a year ago, yeah, but that's like how close the community is, and so that's really neat. So I can take, I plan on still coming to NDK. All right, Matt? I don't have anything in insi- really insightful at all. I'm just super white. Yeah, Matt's a little sleepy. He was up late last night tickling me, and now he's all tired. Yeah, I know, it's hard work tickling people but yeah and i mean i don't really it was my second indicate and it was a lot of fun and one of the people who actually came by he didn't play my dough but he actually was a uh, one of the jurors for indicate one of the previous years and he actually remembered my game nice. and was like oh like what's changed and stuff and he's like it like looks a little eyeball. different <laughs> yeah like he he played one of the old builds that it was just the square with no eye or anything so that was like pretty cool that he remembered seeing the game, especially since it like looks a little different now than like it did before. So. Yeah, you spent the whole year putting an eyeball <laughs> on your character. <laughs> hey, this year we put a two on the box. Yeah, um, I didn't just put an eye. I also removed a couple spikes from a few levels. And so. to be fair, that was two years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was two years ago. That dude. was the one that I was actually showing for you too. Yeah, dude, that was. Yeah. It's okay. Two years. From now, they'll remember the fact that you're still working on it. Hey, Justin invented eyes on boxes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I was like, I brought it home. I thought that was Apple. Wait, what? Anyway. <laughs> get it? Oh. It's slow. so bad. But yeah, no, that's going to be the end of the episode. Thank you all for listening. <laughs>